Hello and welcome to the Alexandra Wenman Show. I'm so excited to have my guest today, Hira Hosen, Ascension Catalyst. Thank you so much for joining me today on the show. It's wonderful to see you. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's a uh, Lionsgate day and um, yesterday I had a lot of things to process through so I was a bit afraid for today. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be, you know, endless. But I woke up very energized, very happy, very blessed and um, yeah, so I'm good. Yeah. Oh, amazing. It's the perfect day to be doing this interview and talking with you. So we want to talk, I want to just talk to you a little bit about Ascension and what led you onto this path to begin with. Those, uh, those who are familiar with your work know that you're, you are an Ascension kind of expert, I suppose, by now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I will ever be an expert on this. I mean, we're all, right? We're all just starting these waves. So every day there's more information coming in. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm just, you know, I'm such a beginner. Um, but it's true. I've always been very interested in it, uh, even before I knew about the words uh, ascension. And um, the definition that I hold for the moment, because it changes as well all the yeah. time. Yeah, is that it's just like uh, about expansion. So when you expand your awareness, um, that is that is ascension. That is like when you grow in a higher frequency of your vibrational signature, right? So uh, anything can be ascension. Any religion, any dogma, any any anything, any dance, any you know meditation can be ascension. So I love that about my work, like uh, being like. Nowadays, I call myself an ascension guide. Uh, I'm not a teacher anymore or something like that. It doesn't fit me anymore. Um, so as, a, as an ascension guide, I'm super happy because I'm like, okay, we can do anything. We can, you know, dance, uh, go there, do this. It's all, you know, it's all good. It's all about, you know, as long as you're, you know, bringing that joy out and bringing that happiness out. But I think my, my way really officially started um, in India. Of course, <laughs> um, yeah. that's a, that's like twenty years ago. So that makes me feel old to think about it. But um, and then officially, officially, when I really felt also the word ascension and the whole you know flow coming through was the uh, first of January two thousand when I was with one of my best friends and we were climbing the Giza pyramid and we were on top of it and it was. I mean, phenomenal, like the energy was phenomenal. And I knew like, okay, this, um, this, is, this is the beginning of a path. And I actually felt complete. Mm -hmm. I felt like whatever I had to do in the world was at that moment was completed. So I started that path as a, as a feeling of total relaxation because was like, okay, whatever I had to do, it's done. So whatever comes now is like a bonus. <laughs> so there's no pressure. <laughs> You know, I did it. I was on the pyramid on the, the 1st of January 2000, whatever that meant, you know, it was done. And it was a, a beautiful opening of Stargate and, you know, holding that, that clarity there was just amazing. And that's so, a lot of kind of in 2000, not that many people knew about Ascension, did they? It wasn't really a buzzword at that time. So, you know, did, did you, had you heard of that term at that time? Did you know what was happening? Did you, could you put a, a word to it? Yes, yes. There's always been uh, some, some teachers that are still here today that, that were speaking about it already. Mm -hmm. So I was following uh, Dreamfellow Melchizedek. Yes, I know his work well. <laughs> yeah, nice. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm like a certified teacher of his school. So I was already very much, um, well, actually at that moment, I didn't know about him. It was when I came off the pyramid and I went through a journey in the Sinai desert, then coming back and somebody handed me his book. So it was like four or five months after that. But um, I do remember knowing that word. And also the word uh, Merkaba came because I, I walked by the Sphinx and, and this time everything was still open. This was Egypt. This was like you could just touch the Sphinx if you wanted to. It wasn't like now where all the, you know, you have to have permission. Um, so, so there was a, a young man there and he said to me, never forget the word Merkaba. And I was like, okay, I won't forget, you know, I was like, completely. 20 years old, like, yeah, sure, 
sure, you know. And then that, that book, I opened it on the, the Merkava. So I was like, oh, okay. And I actually Googled it, you know, <laughs> first, uh, in that period, like January or, you know, whatever, May 2000. And I Googled Merkava. There was nothing, <laughs> nothing, oh, my God. Like, nothing on Google about Merkava. So Ascension, I got the word from, uh, from, from one of my first teachers, and his name is Dr. Joshua David Stone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so I was really following his teachings a lot. I had all his books, still have, still teaching from that work. It's, it's like, the, and he wrote like encyclopedias about ascension. So from him, I learned the word uh, ascension and what it meant. So, yeah, we're yeah. lucky to have him. He was like far ahead of his thought. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I had, I had similar, I suppose, not similar experience in going to Egypt in 2000, but all the the things that were happening to me around that time and also especially leading up to 2012, all the terminology, I, I, I channel, so I was being given information and it was only after I was given information that then I found the Merkabah and I found Joshua David Stone and I found all this stuff that sort of validated and confirmed everything I was already knowing and being downloaded yeah. with. Incredible. I think there's yeah. so much of this going on, isn't it? This awakening, we're tapping into a a much greater consciousness and it's it's wonderful to see so many people now sort of illuminating and waking up into that energy and yeah so you so when you when you climb to the pyramid i mean not many people get to climb up the top of the pyramid how long did it take you to get up the top and could you feel energy on it i mean it's meant to be so powerful electromagnetically it is yeah no it was um it was very naughty, obviously. There was a military all around with guns and, you know, every two, three meter, there was one military. It was guided. I mean, I'm doing like, okay, you could touch it, but it was, you know, it was a huge event. I don't remember what singer was there, but it was huge. Uh, so it wasn't that easy, but my friend and me, we just, you know, like girls do, we just sneaked in and we just climbed it. I do remember when we did climb it. It's true, it's quite big um that um it became uh, it became uh, organic mm. uh, it was like uh, a pyramid with stones anymore yeah it was like uh, uh i could almost put my hands inside of it it was like the whole thing just started to open up and and every time i would climb higher i was of course like completely uh, in trance it was like um you know, when you do stuff that you're supposed to do or that are distant for you to do, you get into a whole different vibe. Like you're almost not yourself, but you're more yourself. But you're... So it was like the whole thing just changed. It was, and it, it actually felt soft mm-hmm. and warm. It wasn't like cold stones or something. It was like, you know, just very inviting, very much like coming there. And then when, when we set up, there was like six of us. There was uh, somebody from Ireland that I remember I'm still connected to on Facebook. Some other people that I've never found back again. And we were holding hands, you know, like we do in the rainbow, like holding hands and chanting. And yeah, it was, it was very sweet, very, very beautiful. And at a certain point, I had a, some sort of download. Like, and I didn't know at that time, we didn't call it download, yeah? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's funny you said like, yeah, it was nice to get the confirmation because... I, in that time, I I felt like I was a bit crazy, to be honest. Like, yeah, I, don't you? It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you feel so, you know, you feel so alone with it. It wasn't, as I said, it wasn't on Google, it wasn't on Facebook, it was nothing of that. Like, you were just alone with your trip. <laughs> it was like a full trip. Yeah. So, and then the download happened. And that's that's something that I I, I will never be able, I think... I hope so, but I think I will never be able to um, to compare to anything. It was like, uh, yeah, it's as if, because the work back then was done by only a few, so we had to carry that load. So now everybody's doing it like, yeah, 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 and I'm happy. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy. We're all doing it together. I wouldn't want to go back. Mm. But in that case, this is 18 years ago. You had to carry that energy alone. So the download that would come. Uh, was was gigantic was was what we carry now with groups of thousands but you would carry it alone so it was really 
I was like, at certain points, I was like, am I still here? You know, like, is my body able to handle this? It's like, yeah, it was phenomenal. And then, so we stayed up all night. And the next morning, late morning, we just went down and the military came up like, wow, there's two <laughs> girls in the pool because we were the only ones who stayed. Mm -hmm. I was a phenomenal. Amazing. And obviously you're back now. We're, I'm talking to you now from Egypt. So what led you back there now? We're, we're now in 2018. I'm assuming you've been back since 2000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I keep coming here since I'm very young. My father had an apartment in Alexandria. And so uh, happily, my uh, karma, family karma or whatever, has always brought, brought me here. So I, I can't count anymore how many times I've been in Egypt. Now I'm in the Sinai Desert. Beautiful. Um, it's dark in my room, but uh, there's so much light. <laughs> so <laughs> cover. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here because I'm also doing a tra travel, just like you, in October, uh, and I'm guiding groups into the pyramid, and I'm very, very excited about it because uh, I'm basically renting the pyramids uh, <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> you get the private time in there, don't you? It's incredible. So, so um, how long is your retreat running for? Um, it will be actually, it will be four retreats, so it's a whole month. So four separate ones. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it's going to be like from the beginning till the, like the 4th of October until I think the 28th of October. So there's like, um, for, first retreat is in the pyramids and the hotel we have is looking out on the pyramids. So that's going to be amazing. That's really to reactivate the pyramids actually. It's like they are very dormant in our days, even though I had my experience 18 years ago, there's some energy there that's quite dormant still until humanity is ready. So now I feel like, okay, humanity is ready. I can go in and do this meditation, finally, not from above, but from inside, you know? Yeah. So that's really cool. I'm gonna take people into the Sinai Desert, which is gonna be amazing too. We're gonna to climb the Sinai Mountain uh, and really reactivate those Mary Magdalene codes and the, you know, the whole energy of the Essenes, the Melchizedek, like every, everyone that has always been there, the ancient ones. And then we do a cruise uh, to all the, the major temples, or not all, we just, we can't do it all, so <laughs> we'll just take the major temples. Um, and then the last uh, is the, uh, the, the activation of the Merkaba, the one of the Juvulo Melchizedek, which we'll be doing in Dashur. Which is a beautiful organic uh, dome and beautiful space where we were very intimate and we are there alone, no tourists, nothing. So yeah, it will be, and so people can sign up for the whole month. They can do the whole thing from the beginning till the end. I'm really excited. So I have signups already. So I'm like, I'm, the core group is there, and uh, yeah, I can't wait. That's amazing. We're going to be like a tag team because our starts on the third, and we start in Giza as well. So we run it. We'll probably run into each other while we're there. But it's better. We're, sounds like we're doing kind of similar things in the reactivating of the of the temples and the pyramids, and then very different after that. But it's amazing. So people can come and do either one or all four of your different components. That's gorgeous. I love that, and it kind of forms like the base of the pyramid, doesn't it? the four corners <laughs> yeah yeah it's um it's it's phenomenal because it's as as you like i channel stuff and it just came guided in yeah so it's like uh the guidance told me then you do that then you do that so yeah it's and i'm especially also looking forward to the sinai uh, desert experience because going up that mountain uh it's been 18 years mm -hmm. so and when i was up that mountain 18 years ago um i i had a very um, big experience i had dreams i, w I was uh, basically i had no money no food no bags nothing i was just up there and i was a bedouin and he said well you know I, I have some blankets so he gave me some blankets gave me some food and he said just stay up here as long as you want so i stayed in the cave there which is called the moses cave and i was a bit like you know i've, I've been growing up christian so i was a bit like yeah right moses <laughs> cave, whatever you know, I wasn't taking it very serious, but I had dreams like of, of Moses receiving those. And I was like, okay, this, this must be like, I must be influenced by something. 
but they keep coming back. So it really became visions and dreams. And so I stayed six, six days up there or something like five days, something like that. And it was just uh, phenomenal. So, and I didn't go back there. So now I'm going to bring a group there. We're going to clear Stargate wow. and just do amazing stuff. Like really, because the scenery desert needs it. That's also why I feel I'm here. It just needs that ascension light. It needs the, you know, that, like I look straight here. I look over the sea. I see Mecca. So I'm like, I'm, you know, and then on the other side, I have the mountains. So I'm like, you know, I'm in, in a spot where, our light can do a lot, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's just really a lot. So I'm really looking forward to those stargates and clearing them. And uh, yeah, it will be phenomenal. Like, oh, really beautiful. I can't wait. And it's amazing. It's interesting, actually, talking about stargates because when, when we went last time in April, we actually went to Abu Ghraib's stargate and I was channeling a lot of information about ancient technology and how the pyramids were used and things like that. But this is interesting to me because you actually have a, a scientific background, don't you? You've worked in sort of a technological arena and now it's like you're working with the actual stargate technology and you know we we both do work with kind of merkaba energy and sacred geometry but how do you feel what do you feel we still have to learn as humanity in order to catch up with the ancients in terms of technology because obviously you've seen it from the 3d perspective that scientific mindset and you and i know that it's one and the same spirituality and science there's no there's not really any difference is there we just need to bridge it what what do you feel we need to we need to um do i guess or what do you feel we need to uh, understand about technology in order to get to where we need to go <laughs> i think we still have a lot to learn like um as as i've seen it in these visions is that we would work a lot with crystals so we would uh, put huge big crystals in different spaces under the ground or in caves and we would link them together so uh, we would do that with sound, with, you know, energy healing. And so we would link these spots. Um, could be for 10, 10, 20, 30 years, just preparing different uh, stargates, just preparing different spaces. And we would walk in different um, directions. So we would, we would have like, you know, like you see the monks do in, in, in Tibet and in, in India, they, they walk in different in directions. So we would... We would just create spaces and with this technology of, um, of crystals and also the, um, you know, the, the stargates and ships, so the UFOs and everything, we would connect them together. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we would use sound again as, um, you know, and even be able to move objects and stuff like that through. So you have the ship and then you have the crystals and then you have us in between. We're guiding the whole thing, making sounds, movements. Uh, that's why, for example, live language is coming through a lot. I'm going to do today at eight o'clock a live uh, Facebook with, uh, with live language where um this this is one of those techniques yeah where where for me the light language is more about toning and about movement so my my body will just start moving some other people speak a lot or they write or something like that for me it's all about movement so that my body can get into a full trance and do the toning as the as the sound so so i think we're getting there but much more slow than what i would like to <laughs> It's, it's, you know, and all that free energy is already out there. I mean, the last 20 years, I mean, longer, obviously, hundreds of years, it's already out there. How we can create these new tools. So I'm a bit like, okay, it's been out there for hundreds of years. I know we got it before, but just let's get out, you know, as more people that do it. Yeah. So it's, it's going slow, but we have a lot to learn. It's, it involves crystals, sound um vibration frequency and uh, obviously working with the extraterrestrials or intraterrestrials whatever you want to call them yeah so i want to oh, uh, ask you a little bit more about it. sorry carry on <laughs> yeah. i just wanted to say that by the way yes i'm an engineer so i have a degree in uh, i have a master of science and i love to say it because i never did anything with it but i'm like <laughs> yeah if new age they're like oh my god look at her speaking about things floating in the air blah 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 and i'm like yeah well whatever i have a master of science and i know how science works it just works on a hypothesis and then when you can prove the hypothesis it's science so i'm like 
hello. <laughs> oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> like you've got, you've got credentials, girl. It's not just, you know, I think this, this whole thing of like people that are spiritual, apparently being all floaty and woo woo and not grounded and not really very intelligent is a bit passe now. It's a bit old. We're all educated, grounded human beings. We just, you know, the irony is that the, the people that, get this stuff actually know more than the people who think we're a bit la la but you know bless them with love <laughs> it's quite uh, it's quite funny and quite telling but i want to ask you about your your experiences with light language and when did it first start for you when did you first start channeling how did this start coming through for you um it's it's not a, a specific date or time it's just that uh when i was a child already i um very very young i would build little uh, fairy um little fairy places like altars in trees and so i would be all day outside and just make little things and i would just be with the fairies so i think that's where it started because uh, obviously, the light language you can channel all the ancient ones, and you can channel the the, the fairy kingdom, and you can channel the, the stargate and the galactic uh, families and universal families, and basically you can you can go for whatever you know. So so it's it's I think that's where I started as already as a child. I was very in tune with that, but it was very secretive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very like on my own, like only when I was alone. And that just continued to, to like this year, only when I was alone or uh, people would see me do it when I would be dancing. But they would just be thinking, oh, she's, you know, she's a bit off. And she, you know, some people would love the way I dance and some people would think a bit weird. Um, but that's, that's when things would start to, that was the only moment that I, I would share this, uh, this light language coming through. And then um, this, Two months ago only, I think, or even less, uh, I went to Jamie Price, finally. I think you know her. She's amazing. I've been following her for years. And then at one moment, I was like, okay, that's it. I've been following her for years. I can't meet her because I've met so many teachers that I was like, something is wrong here. So I went down the, I was, you know, on the newsletter. So I went down the newsletter to actually unsubscribe because I was like, this is like five, six years I'm following her and nothing happening. And then I saw like on the screen, you know, like, coming to Switzerland, you know, so I was like, oh, well, that's it. Finally, it's going to happen. Yeah, so, and she really gave me, and the whole group, she's amazing. She really gave me the confidence that I needed. And I was like, wow, it's so amazing. I'm like 44 doing all that work. And I still apparently really need confidence to actually come out with that light language because it, you just feel kind of weird. Uh, so she just helped me through all of that and just gave me the confidence I needed and the love and the support. She's amazing. So officially now I can do it and I'm, I'm okay to do it publicly. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, is, it is daunting, I think, when you first start doing any of this because... To, to the to anyone it, it looks a bit weird I think I know that like when I channel sometimes my hand shakes and the voice changes and then if the light language comes through it, it comes through in my healing sessions as well with people and I always say before just in case this happens if you need to laugh do because it's all about joy as well like don't fit don't feel like you have to stifle your laughter because it will sound a bit bonkers and and it but it's actually going to raise your your frequency and that's the whole point of it so yeah i think it's like we're we're all even though we're you know we're all out there now kind of publicly talking about it it's still a bit daunting when it comes through isn't it i watched your your beautiful channeling in the cave the mary magdalene one recently with your friend that was just amazing really beautiful the the energy was so powerful and so at the same time really um harmonizing and calming it was really beautiful so are you taking more groups to france as well is this because you i know that you're very much on the the mary magdalene trail <laughs> you're so sweet alexandra i love your energy so sweet oh, bless you Hira. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am uh, in Ascension Day. Like in France, we have an, a special and official Ascension Day uh, where everybody's free. 
uh, and so that day, there's a week, uh, we go to Vizle, and Vizle, uh, I've never been there, but last, uh, this, this year in May, I went up for the first time. So I give a workshop there with my sister Petra from the Linde, and uh, so we will go there again, and she's, she's organizing stuff also around the, you know, Rennes Chateau, and uh, Baume, and you know, stuff like that, like all these beautiful Mary Magdalene places, uh, Saint Marie de la Mer, so yeah. it's it's all slowly happening and yes so we are bringing groups into france beautiful so, yeah because yeah, you used to you were living in france weren't you you i know that you uh, you're a zen nun am i right yes <laughs> and how long were you in france for um we're still officially living in france so we still have an apartment there uh and it's true it's around the the area of the mary magdalene and the qatar temples and everything mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I didn't know that. I, I, I was just pulled there because we started a Zen temple there. So we lived there 10 years. And then of course, after a while, I started to understand that I had a link with those places and that Mary Magdalene came there and you know, so all of that. And um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a Zen nun. So officially uh, my husband is a Zen master and um, yeah, I love it because it really brings the practice of meditation in a more uh, daily context because mm -hmm. uh, I need discipline, you know, I, I don't just go sitting somewhere uh, every day for one and a half hours. So I needed that uh, context, the structure of the whole Sangha, of the whole group. And uh, about a year ago, we, uh, we left because the, the energies were changing, the dynamics were changing, the master was, you know, our mutual master. Uh, is giving more and more place to other people and so you know things just moved and so we went out which was a big huge thing for us and uh, now I'm following another uh, teacher so I'm my, my Zen master is with me everywhere I go so I feel like I'm not doing anything new or something or different I feel that I'm still doing that Zen practice uh, it's just that I'm, I'm now part of uh, also another uh, Sangha and this teacher is called Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche and he teaches uh, Dzogchen, um, so it's 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 um, it's also Buddhism and also Burn tradition, very very ancient. Uh, so Hira, you also work with people one on one in session. How do you how do you work with individuals? Um, I basically uh, go into a very easy um, ground. Like I I bring them through guided meditation inside of themselves. Um, there they connect to their own source mm -hmm. and once they have connected to their own source I hold space and uh, and we can do in that space when they're in that trance you could call it or meditative state uh, we go into processing um, emotions or uh, physical ailments or mental you know obsessions or anything like that we bring it first we go into that space become that space mm -hmm. become infinite and then from that infinite awareness we invite whatever uh, experience there is that needs healing and then just by recognizing it and observing it so we're not doing much we're not like you know a healing in that sense but because we are giving it space it just heals uh, naturally some some things obviously are you carry with you your whole life so it's not like done in in five minutes but it is possible you know, I, if you go really, really deep, then it is possible. So, yeah, so it's like this. And, yeah. yeah, it's like often the awareness is enough, isn't it? Just having the acknowledgement of it can transform. Yeah, yeah. And I will use my my bell, like my my beautiful golden bell. Mm. So it's possible. We do chanting, uh, chanting, healing. Um, you know meditation so but the meditation is the thing like some people just want to talk and then i i usually not agree with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and speaking of transformation obviously you're looking very different to what we're used to how we're used to seeing you tell tell me about the haircut because we had a, a, a sort of a beginning of a conversation before we started recording what what was behind this this decision to cut your hair it was it was something I wanted to do for quite a long time, but my uh, my husband and my daughter Mahatma they, they didn't agree. Especially my daughter, she was like, "No, mommy, um, I don't want to see you without hair and stuff." So 
So I prepared them slowly, slowly, and at a certain point they were both okay. And I said, okay, you, you can do it. Because especially in the beginning, it's quite intense. It's like you, you know, you just, it's, people also on the street just really, you really want to do this um, and knowing that this is what you want, because it, it really, um, on, on the level, of, I did it because I wanted to go deeper in my practice. Mm -hmm. And it means that my practice is to not identify with being um, a woman or a teacher or a mother or a wife or you know all those stuff so so basically our mantra all day is i right so i am doing this and i'm feeling like that and i i i so so that mantra is just uh, standing in our way of of really waking up so i disidentify constantly it's like a constant practice not only the meditation in the morning but every moment that i'm aware of that i'm in my head thinking that i am i and so kind of like making that separative consciousness where i'm separate from all the rest mm -hmm. um then i go back to that practice of non-identification and just become space or silence or stillness or you know all these different um uh, ways the ego can go into your source and you become one again with everything. Mm -hmm. So I do that constantly and I really felt uh, I was going to the summer camp, the Sokshen teaching, the Tumo practice. It's like um, activating the inner heat inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I really felt committed. I, it was like a commitment where I was like, okay, I, a devotional thing to do. Like, okay, bomb. Because 14 years ago I did the same when I became a Bodhisattva. So in, in Zen you have to... Um, ordinations you have uh, the ordination of bodhisattva and the ordination of a nun or a monk mm -hmm. so i had done it but it had been 14 years and i was like wow what happened in those 14 years it's just phenomenal so i was like okay i'm ready and so uh when i did that it was like i really i had to go through a lot i mean i was like oh my god my instagram um identity is different and my facebook and blah 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 <laughs> and i was like that's exactly why i'm doing this you see it's like all this, I mean, women, we women are so identified with what we're wearing and our did it, did, and it's fine. I mean, I love it too. I love tantra, I love tasting stuff and smelling and, you know, and living, and I love it. But we can go too far into it and identifying with this body, with this, the way we look, the, the way things we think and feel. So it was like this I really wanted to go deep, and I did it. and. Um, and so, yeah, I really feel like I, it's like I cut, like yeah. directly, bam, bam, yeah. and I start. Yeah, so. Like appearing back, amazing. Oh, I love your philosophy, Hira. I love, I love everything that you have to say about this non-identification. I think it's very true. And I think um, sometimes we do get too attached with our titles and everything. So it's very, it's very refreshing. And, well, it, you know, it shows that we're all part of that one unity consciousness of love as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Hira, thank you so much for talking to me today. Just to remind our viewers, um, can you let us know your website and how people can find you to find out about your retreats and your sessions and everything? Yes, of course. Um, I have a website which is called Tantra of the Heart, tantraoftheheart.com. Yeah. And then I have another website which is called Ride Your Lotus. I give um, online classes sometimes every week and now i do one a month like it's summer and i need a lot of integration and, and preparation for the work that i will be doing so that's called rideyourlotus.com and uh, that has all the events in it so you can book straight through the ride your lotus or find more information about my meditations free meditations everything uh, on tantraoftheheart.com so. Amazing. And I'll share all the links below the video and, and in the title so that people can see and just go and click there. But thank you so much, my darling. I hope to, uh, I hope to bump into you in Egypt in October and uh, hope to speak to you soon. Thank you, Hira. And for all of those watching, thank you so much for tuning in and watching the Alexandra Wenman Show today.